We got the washer wired up and we've run a few loads through that. One of the goals that we've kind of had over the last few weeks is to reduce the amount of workload in our day-to-day -day life, i.e. add conveniences, call them what you want. And one of those is to reduce what we call the off-grid shuffle. So a lot of people have criticized us for becoming an all-electric house when we were completely off-grid before. And it's simply a matter of convenience. We want everything delivered here right now so we can live in our house, we can be warm and stop running around picking up propane, picking up generator fuel, and in the case of the washer and dryer, going to the laundromat and using the grid to wash our laundry. Not very off grid, is it? So we want to get the dryer connected. The washer's up and running, everything's working great, the plumbing's awesome. We don't have a vent for the dryer though. Something we learned from the plumbing inspector who happens to also be the HVAC inspector is that here in Idaho, by the way, you have to have an HVAC inspection for any type of ventilation. The dryer's one of those. We are not allowed to connect the exhaust fan for the bathroom or a kitchen exhaust vent to the dryer. The dryer must have its own direct venting source. So we've got to run a dedicated vent to the exterior of the house. I've kind of got a plan. Let's take a look. I used Schedule 40 PVC for the drain, or excuse me, for the vent on the bathroom. The logic there is that Schedule 40 is rated for Drain Waste and Vent, or DWV. It's got to be marked on the pipe. You'll see it, DWV. When it comes to inspections, there's kind of little things that we've learned that inspectors look for. And in our area, although a lot of plumbers think this is ridiculous, I guess it's just plumber problems, we have to use ABS for all of our, our waste. In some areas, PVC is code. In some areas, they don't care what you use. The nice thing about using PVC for the vent is that an inspector can walk in and immediately look at the pipe and see that you've got waste that's ABS or black and that you've got PVC for venting and it's white. And they like that. It's just a little thing. And I guess we don't really care either way as long as it, as it makes sense and it works. So the goal is to use this four inch PVC Schedule 40 to build a vent for the dryer. I was worried that I don't have the right size hole saw. Ooh, that's four and a quarter. No, nope, I don't think it's big enough. This is four and a half on the dot. That's snug. Oh yeah, really snug. Winter. Oh, poor guy.
holy cow. So the snow that's sliding off the roof, this is where the snow normally lands, about right there. And this stuff is landing clear out there. It's coming off in sheets. I highly doubt we're gonna catch any of it on camera, but <laughs> wow. What is that, like 18 feet out there, 20 feet? So I've kind of been thinking about how to uh, do this dryer vent since we can't merge it with our bath fan vent. And there's probably a product for this. I don't know what it is. I'm kind of just using common sense, I suppose. The way we have the other vents up here at the eye joist, for example, the bath fan, and this is the vent for the bath sewer, or I guess the, the sewer on this whole wall, is we basically are using the center of one of these eye joist bays, and it's a little tight in there. If I try to tuck it in there, this vent is four and a half inch outside diameter. That's not gonna leave a whole lot of meat to that rim board, and I think ultimately trimming it out on the outside would be difficult. So I think I'm gonna to try to sneak this vent up through this eye joist bay. This works out really good because we can come out, come down the ICF, and we basically need to terminate somewhere right about here. When I originally looked at the dryer, I was really irritated at myself because where I put the outlet for the washer actually is exactly where this uh, vent comes out of the dryer. But looking more closely, there's actually a place for us to knock out on the side of the dryer, and that would work perfectly. Uh-oh. Well, I didn't get very far before I already ran into problems. So trying to think ahead, I bought the four and a half inch hole saw while I was at the hardware store because I wasn't sure I had one. I don't. And now we're running into the same problem we had when we tried to bore the hole for the bathroom that our bit extension, which mind you are not cheap, doesn't fit the hole saw. So now I'm kind of stuck in a quandary. Do I go find a hole saw that fits the hole saw mandrel that fits the bit extension or do I go find another bit extension to fit this hole saw? Holy cow, <laughs> I just heard a really loud rumble. So either we had an earthquake or the roof just slid. Do you guys wanna see? I do. Woo, it's snowing pretty good out here. Oh yeah, it totally slid. <laughs> Holy cow, gonna wanna watch out. Stand back. Wow, there's snow clear out here. Oh yeah, whoa. Almost fell. Oh, it's gonna slide more. Oh, this camera shut off. Sorry guys, I thought we would get it on camera. Oh, the battery died. Wow, there's snow clear over there. That's probably 20, 25 feet away from the building. Humdinger. I had a camera set up for you guys out there trying to catch the roof over there sliding, but the darn battery died. So I think I'm gonna go put another battery in there and maybe while I'm gone trying to figure out this drill bit thing, the rest of that'll finally go. There we go. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> well guys, I was gone for probably over an hour and the doggone roof didn't slide. So I guess we'll have to wait till we can capture it on camera another day. What I suspected is confirmed at the hardware store. So this extension that we have is actually a 7 16 extension. And it's actually fairly common for whole hogs and things like that but there's actually another extension out there that's a 3 8 extension and then there's, of course the quarter inch extensions which is for impact. I made the decision to invest in a 3 8 extension because we have pole saws and things that have this bit on them and if we need to drill through like a timber or something it'll be nice to have the extension. I confirmed that this in fact is a completely unique system that doesn't is not compatible with our other bits even though with this kit they sell this nut or a nut like this 
that will convert a more traditional hole saw, something like this, so that it will fit this system. The problem I foresee is that there's no locking mechanism so that as soon as you basically hit reverse on the drill, this bit is gonna spin backwards out of the mandrel and you're up a creek. So what I'm realizing is that I probably should just stick with the system that I already have. I have the mandrel, I have tons of these hole saws. It seems ridiculous to invest in a whole nother system. Even though there is a perk to this Diablo, it's about a half an inch deeper. So it would in theory work better so I'm thinking I'm gonna put it on the shelf, think about it for a few days, and I'll probably, probably will end up returning this system and using this guy. line and the ICF actually lines up with what will be the center line of this hole. If everything's correct, it looks to be, if we drill that hole right there, our PVC will end up coming down on this little mark on the ICF. That's really helpful. I don't even have to make a chalk line. this. It's a ton of work. Nice. Made it through the rim board. Ah. Nice. Through the outer skin of the sip. Ouch. Still got grit though. Let's see if we pull a plug out of there. Nope, not yet. Well, that didn't work the way we wanted it to. able to get it all from the inside. Maybe. No, I think it's going to be easier to do it from outside. Oof. Getting harder to pop that foam. Well, there it is. There's the outside zip. Oh, there we go. I did it. Cool. Yeah. So just kind of slicing it like a pizza and then kind of popping it loose and then pulling it out. Kind of clean that hole out. I can see the sip right there. I think if we can get through here, we're good. We're golden. Ugh, she's not gonna go without a fight. Oh, we're really close. There she is. There's the outside sip. Oh, that's pretty good breeze coming through there. So I got the hole drilled in the rim board. I'm gonna take that big stick of 
uh, PVC outside and I'm gonna slide it in through the hole. I need you to kind of stop me when I'm probably about a foot past the um, sill plate. And then I'm gonna make a mark with a Sharpie. I'm gonna pull it back out. I, I probably will bring it in here, cut it, and slide it in through that hole. Into the darkness. She's tight. Oh yeah, really tight. Wow. Wow, that's really tight. I think Alyssa's got it figured out in there. I don't know if this is coming back out though. Wow. That really hurts too. Yeah. How far? You're not even to the sill plate yet. Okay, I gotta do something else. Okay, coming in. Well, that'll work for now. So yeah, that's, I don't think that's four and a half. I think it was more like four and three sixteenths. And I'm trying to pound that four and a half inch pipe through a sixteenth shy hole. So that'll work. Thanks for the help. I don't think it'll ever stop exciting me when you set a level down and everything looks perfectly level. Part of home building, I guess. There's a really good draft coming through there. So we want this pipe to sit flush against these unistruts. So it looks to me like it's too far. So I think we're gonna just kind of do this the old fashioned way, stick the pipe in there, and we'll kind of tap this all until it's sitting flush against the wall. So that's about where we want to be. 
So it looks like we need to go in about three inches or so. Okay, we're close. <laughs> Sitting on there, okay. Beautiful. Some of you out there who work with this material every day know what this is. This is a, a product called Unistrut, and it's actually a company that makes all kinds of gadgetry to do things like this to kind of, it's kind of like an erector set. That's the best explanation I have for it. And I was able to find some of the shallow version, which is what this is locally. And it just so happens that in the electrical trade, they use these straps for conduit. And so, because this is basically four inch PVC conduit, except it's drain, waste, and vent, um, they had these four inch straps in stock. I do want to replace these screws because they're just inadequate. I want to find something that's more appropriate for this application. I'll probably anchor a couple of screws here so that there's four fastening locations. Um, otherwise, I'd say that's a nice, clean, permanent install. Of course, down the road when we put our sheetrock or whatever we put here, probably 5 8 sheetrock, we'll have to take this off and move everything out 5 8 of an inch and then put it right back on, you know, over the sheetrock. The nice thing is it won't take very long to do. I think sheetrock's going to be quite a, quite a project anyway. And who knows, we might end up using plywood or something else. Uh, what do I say guys? Um, I feel like a complete idiot. So I've been reading the manual for the dryer and I guess if I would have done that before I did all of this, I would have realized what you HVAC people out there are probably already thinking. You're screaming at me for installing PVC. And in a nutshell, the manufacturer, Samsung of the dryer, prohibits the use of PVC for dryer ducting. It's really frustrating because I have had conversations with more than one person lately about dryer ducting. And for whatever reason, everyone I've talked to agreed that PVC is the bee's knees. And the logic made sense to me. It's smooth, it's rigid, there's no screws, it's easy to clean, so that was the logic. Here's the thing though. After I kind of went down this rabbit trail, so I'm just going to share this with you guys. The International Mechanical Code does not list PVC as an acceptable dryer vent. Now, ironically, the PVC is rated for drain, waste, and vent. So as far as I know, the bathroom vent that we have installed is acceptable. But as far as dryer venting, and I'm reading the code now and finding out that exhaust hoods for a range or something like that also do not list PVC as an acceptable vent material. So here I am. Today is not going as planned. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna cap this pipe for tonight. And I'm gonna do some more research tonight. Try to read up and get more savvy on this stuff. I just feel really frustrated because I feel like we're trying so hard to do what we perceive to be wise. I realize now that all the benefits of PVC are pretty much nullified because the plastic is able to build up static. And the static, if you know anything about static, which you HVAC people do, and I'm, I know some about static, but not as much as you guys, it will allow lint to cling to the PVC even though it's perfectly smooth. Figure that out. And the problem with lint is it's extremely flammable. So all the benefits of PVC are pretty much null 
because it's plastic. The good news is I don't think anything that we've done up to this point is going to inhibit our ability to put in a proper ducting system. So I think that's it for now. I've got to shut this project down and we'll start tomorrow and see if we can even locate the product that will do this job. I think I'm gonna do more research uh, because I'm looking for something that will get rid of the heat. We don't have air conditioning in this house. We don't really plan on putting air conditioning in this house. We built it into the hillside. We spent tremendous amounts of money and time trying to make the house efficient. So we don't really wanna have a bunch of heat in the garage from a thin wall ducting system. It's time to go do more research and start making some phone calls. I guess that's where we'll start tomorrow. I hope whatever we find fits this system. I think we'll be able to find it because the code does say four inch. We have that correct. Um, so hopefully maybe we can keep using this Unistrut system or we'll find some other system to strap to the wall. I don't know. I guess I was kind of I was kind of bent on this working. It just, it works so good, and yet it doesn't work at all. <laughs> and just my luck, while I'm sitting here reading the manual and reading the mechanical code, the darn roof slid, and we missed it. And I'll tell you, it slid three times. And Alyssa texted me, holy cow, I think the roof slid. It's, it's exciting. So hopefully, one of these times this winter, we'll catch it on camera. Although it's a sneaky little bugger, and uh, we just don't have time to have a camera out there for 15 hours a day, so mm, better luck next time.